Hey Leute, oh mein Gott, was haben wir denn hier? Das ist ja natürlich die falsche IP. Wir wollen nicht auf Localhost, wir wollen auf 109.202.107.134. Ähm, was für eine tolle Dauerwerbesendung haben wir denn hier? Ähm, laufen wir? Ja, Aufnahme läuft. Und äh, wie ihr vielleicht hier schon gesehen habt, ich habe mal wieder ein Video vorbereitet. Äh, hier, ne? ähm, von, von dem Media CCC Channel, mediaccc.de. Ähm, mit dem Titel ähm, How Hackers Grind an MMR, MMORPG Jesus, äh, by Taking It Apart. Und das sage ich mal wieder anders gut ausgesprochen für euch. Der Vortrag ist von äh, Rink Springer und ähm, da will ich einfach mal sagen, ja, ist von 2015, ähm, genau, da will ich einfach mal sagen, let's go. Thank you. 
transactions to, yeah, to ensure that developers can eat. The goal of the game is to create a virtual character, like this elf wizard or whatever, and you improve it. And you improve it by, by gaining levels, by finding items, gear, if you will, by completing quests, because quests give you levels, typically. And that the main the main reason to play this game is because you want to get stronger. You want to do more content. You want to, yeah, you want to do stuff. You want to show the world your virtual person is interesting. And the, the game is socially involved. There's team play involved. You can't do generally do stuff by your, by yourself. You need others. You need friends. And well, what level of friendship you need is uh, an entirely different matter. But you can't do it alone. And secondly, these games are designed to suck up time. They are designed to get you coming back. They really want you to, to get in the world and they want you to keep playing it. And you can do it by playing, but you can also do it with different means, which I will show you now. So, what does the game look like? The game I'm covering, it looks like this. If you've never played it before, it's all by now, but who knows? It's free to play, so so you can you can just go and download it, install it, you can do whatever you want with it. Well, that's what I did anyway. Okay. Uh, it's at the time when you publish here and you really see it back in the, in, the, in the way the game is created because the term grinding means you, you would beat some activity over and over again. And that's exactly what they do and uh, I've heard Taiwanese developers, Asians really, are really will love it stuff and this game does it quite well. So, what does Was? this game offer? A really, really quick, quick Hä? Now, Irgendwie uh, mit dem Asians und den Deutschen wurde ich gerade echt ein bisschen confused. Ich hoffe, ihr hört überhaupt irgendwas, der ist ziemlich leise. Ich habe hier volle Lautstärke. Ist das eigentlich ein Holländer? Rick Springer. Weil er meint ja sein holländischer Anwalt und so. Ähm, um, I don't know. Vielleicht. Man kann ja auch einen holländischen Anwalt haben und mit dem Englisch reden, ne? Your dump file from TCP dump in TCP flow, and you get a text file with the TCP data. 
And that's really useful because I don't like reading TCP handles myself. So what you do is, it looks like this. You can just uh, tell TCP them to dump everything from a certain network into a file. And it's really useful to filter on a network because you don't want DME or DNS requests and whatever to your own systems to be logged. You just want to dump everything that goes to the network of the publisher. And the, the nice part is you can use Ruiz to find out what the range is. So you really know quite fast what's interesting and what is not. And then you, you call TCP dump on this capture file and you just say, okay, let's, uh, let's look at the file and you obtain it something like the stuff below. So what it does is it has a source IP definition of main and two port, and it just shows, okay, this is the data of that, of what I found. It's really simple. Well, if we look at the, when, I, when I'm logging into the game, you get something like this. And if you look at it, you're like, hmm, that's a lot of data. Huh? But, but the important thing you start to note, I started to notice, there's a lot of zeros in there, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, zeros, that's all. And I logged in with, with four A's as username and four A's as password. And what I noticed was, hmm, there's still zeros in there, so I'm pretty sure they have crafted a really interesting, super high-tech encryption algorithm. And I'm going to find it out. But yes, so that's what we do. <laughs> and the other das habe ich schon gesehen, als ich kurz reingesnoopt habe in das Video. Four bytes of every packet are the Spoiler. Of that, of that piece. Because if you just look at it, By the, four, by the first it's 16, and there are 16 bytes, and by, and by the thing on the bottom there are 14, and indeed there are 14 bytes. So the first By the first it's 16, and there are 16 bytes. Ah, uh, 16. And by, and by the thing on the bottom there are 14, and indeed there are 14 bytes. Ah. Und in der Mitte sind es dann 54. Verstehe ich das richtig? Schon, oder? Ja. Hm, mhm, ja, jetzt sehe This also gives another clue because it's little Indian. You can immediately tell because everyone recognizes little Indian, right? <laughs> so if we continue with this, and Here, we just click on the zeros, right? Because we don't care. 16, 16, 54, 54, 14, 14. Now, this doesn't look very interesting, <coughs> so I decided I'm going to log in with four A's and four B's. And what you see is the, the underlined numbers are the numbers that change. And as you can see, the packet names, which I assumed were the, were the first four bytes, just by ma making educated guesses, because that is what you do and stuff like this. And what you see is they don't change, so the guess is pretty like the look at it. Now, the other packets, hmm, there's stuff changing in there, and well, I'm not that sure. But I can make an educated guess, because the data of the, the yeah, is You can see that there is four times of 5A, and if you look at the previous slide, and the second packet of the 10, that's four, that's four times uh, 21. So that's likely the username, right? And I tested this theory because I was like, okay, now I'm going to do 6As, and indeed you see 6A, and it's nicely padded with zeros. That's because we love me. They want me to do this stuff. So if you continue with this, you see this can't be hard, but instead of looking at the actual Ooh, looting. encryption, data mangling, however you want to call it, what, what I did was, I was just making a guess, hmm, the password is always at offset 50 and 60, and the, and the password you see, it is always, it, it is not that random at all, right? Because the, if you just look at the difference between each byte, then you, I was like, hmm, this only skips one or two or four or seven, it's not random at all. So I'm making a guess here. It, 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 I was like, hmm, I know MD5 is 60 bytes, and, and, but if I write MD5 at hex digits, I know it's 32 bytes, right? So let's try. So I tried it, and if you, if you calculate MD5 hat your 4H, you will get 74, blah, blah, blah. And if you try to map this to the password, the 7 and a 4, the difference between them is 3. And F7, F4, the difference between them is 3. Hmm. That can be a coincidence, right? Well, if we continue this guessing game, you will all, you, the, the, fourth, the fourth digit is a seven, after that is a three. And indeed, you will, you will see that the password repeats F7 and three over there. And you, you will see that it then contains three seven. So the next two bytes are indeed F3, F3, F7. So 
I was like, hmm, I'm pretty sure they use MD5 because, well, the, the difference, uh, we don't know how yeah, it's the was it, but what we do know is, we understand that the difference between the, the, the bytes, if you will, it is the same, it's exactly the same. So that usually means that they use super high level cryptography, XOR, of course, who doesn't, <laughs> and the, and what I, what I decided was, I, uh, this uh, first so. I was just writing down, right? Because I, you just assume that that F7, F3 goes to this MD5 stuff. We've just, yeah, we've just basically guessed that they use. But the next part was, well, hmm, how do you get from F7 to for 37? And if you just, uh, if you just write down bits, because that's what I do when I'm, but I'm, when I don't know, then what I started noticing is that only the top bits were different. And then I was like, hmm, I don't have the crypto skills to deal with this, but I remembered that a zero goes to a zero, right? And how do you do it with XOR? Well, it's simple, you do plus a letter, you plus a number, and you XOR it with a number, and you end up with zero. Because N is XOR, N is zero. And if you just apply this knowledge, because the first packet I got, is I assumed there's a key. I didn't know anything about it, but it changed. And if I just assume the very first byte is a key and I plug it in at the 20 you see at the top, if I insert the 20, I take F7 plus 20 XOR 20, I end up exactly what I expected. So this package of proofs, it might go a bit quick, but the slides are in the system, so you can look it up if you want to do it. And I want to get this boring stuff out of the way. But the interesting part of this is, you can do this by hand just by thinking about the data. What do you see? You see a lot of zilch. You see data that is not random at all. So I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Dachte, so then you so have an idea man. how the cryptography works. You have an idea how the rest of the game uh, is. So what you do is you start dropping a lot of this stuff and you start looking at it, right? Uh, and the things yeah, I saw was, if you look schwer, at uh, the last four numbers here, you will see that continue so you get zero one two all the times two and it, it just goes on and on so it's a sequence number because you need them in tcp right very important and the number before it it just goes from zero all the way to nine and then it resets again to zero one etc and was was like was the sequence number goes on and on continue so you look at the last four numbers here you will see if it just continue so you get zero one two. zero Ah, one, two, three. Two ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Goes on and on. So it's a sequence number. Because you need them in TCP, right? Very important. But sind die nicht the sequence number abhängig von der, äh, von der Datenmenge, die gesendet wird? Das ist doch niemals 1, 2, 3, 4. Das sollte zwar immer größer werden, aber nicht halt, äh, mit dem Faktor 1, oder? Oder was verstehe ich hier nicht? All the way to nine, and then it resets again to zero, one, etc. And I was like, hmm, maybe that's the key they're using, because I know the key is that bytes. And indeed, it turned out, the, the that number just says, that's the key you need to use, is if, if it's FF, you obtain the key yourself. And that's basically all to it. But there are two numbers, I was like, what, what do they do? They look random to me, real random, as if, Hmm, they don't differ by one every packet, because that isn't random. And what I noticed was, I didn't know anything at all. So I fired up Oli DBG and Ida, I set few breakpoints, and after a, a, a bit of coffee and a bit of patience, uh, they are checksums. And they have separate header and data checksums in this game. Hmm. Leute, ich ähm, muss mich kurz mal selber hier embarrassen. Was liege ich denn hier in meiner History? Caller Pizza, T-Skins, YouTube Downloader, Minecraft Lists, Team Viewer. Okay, passt. Oli DBG. Um.
Wait, wait, and what? Oh my god, we have kind of creative comments here. Um, das könnte man fast mal in der nächsten Episode anschauen. Ne? Mit denen weitergearbeitet werden soll. Dann findet die Operation. Der sitzt halt nicht echt mit so einer Dingsmaske in der Präsentation. Free User? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 oder irgendwas? Da braucht man schon Balls of Steel, um sich sowas zu machen. Die Angabe ist richtig. Genial, oder? Schon haben wir es gecrackt. Key dich. Richtig funny. Okay. Holly, GDB, äh, DG, DBG. Ach so, für Debug, nicht GDB. Ähm. Ja, es wohl so ein Reverse Engineering Tool einfach. Okay. Ich weiß mal Bescheid. Welche wollte ich denn kombinieren? So used this. 
Now, what it does is, because we know the length, because TCP has this annoying tendency to buffer stuff, really annoying, so, and sometimes you will just get a packet that's incomplete, or, or the complete TCP packet, you get from this three and a half packet, and you have to remember, huh, I need to understand the last 12 bytes, I need to, uh, it's very annoying, so I want this tool to help me. And what it does is, it just assembles a packet, does the decryption, it does and such, and it looks in the XML file and it will continue. So what I so this, this is what it looks like. I will look I will first do the packet at the at the bottom of the screen, the lock on failure packet. Both names are just what I came up with because what the hell? And if you look at the top right, you can just say packet name is okay. And it's uh, the first field is a is a is a U32. That's wrong done. Hat er seinen eigenen Dissektor geschrieben, sozusagen? Das ist ja wie ein Wireshark-Dissektor, sozusagen, oder? Hm. Packet type login type x2 type login failure error. Cool.
Yeah, the item structure of this game is really complex, right? We've seen and lots, lots of stuff on the screen. It has to go to your clients in some way. So what I did was I wanted to add structs to this yeah, because all items will likely have exactly the same format because most programmers are lazy and they should be. What you want to do is you want to format out one time and then you want to use this everywhere. So you need structure types. You really need them. You need arrays because arrays are... Uh, Everyone loves them. You, 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 you will see, you will see the data that belongs together. But the other interesting part is, I wanted, I have transformation support in there. What that does is, I sometimes you will, you will find a packet type or something, and it's compressed because, yeah, it's a natural game. It makes sense to compress stuff. So once you figure it out, I will get into that shortly how you can do this. But you want to be able to tell your dump tool. From, uh, hi, the data that's coming is compressed with algorithm XYZ and no transform it for me. And if you implement it right, in other words, you do not write this tool in C, then it's really easy to do. Because, well, it took me a few clever hacks to put this in. And also, you want annotations. And what I mean by that is, if you log into this game, it will, it will say, hi, you have completed quest 1, 2, 3, 4. And I was like, hmm, I have no idea what quest one, two, three, four is. So I was like, how, the, how can I learn this? I will get in, next, in the next slides that you can, uh, 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 really clever ways to look it up. But you want your dump tool to know if you have this number, you need to look it up in a table. And I want to see the, 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 the human readable form because computers like quest one, two, three, four. And I want to know what is really in there. And you also want dynamic annotations. And this game works, I'm, I'm, I'm actually just working ahead now, but the game works by on an object basis. The server says, hi, there's an object over there. Everything that is not static is an object. And the IDs of the objects are random. You know, they're actually sequential, so that's not really random. But, but you can't predict them, uh, it, uh, at least I can't. So what, it, what, what you do is, it will just say, hi, hi, I want you to show object one, two, three, object type one, two, three, four at at some position, and I'm going to call it object 2. And what, what the dynamic annotation in the tool does is, everywhere it sees object ID 2, it will say, aha, that's that door, because it knows it was a door, so you can show that it's a door. I will give examples of this. But first, how there are custom items ID, and I touched them previously. And w the one of the things you need to realize is, Games are typically, and everything that we do, is, is just numbers, right? Yeah. And there's a database and that is numbers. So I was like, it's really useful when you start figuring out uh, inventory management and you just click on items in your backpack and see what they do. You want to see, this, this, I have this potion and I think the game must have it in this data form. So what's the idea of the potion? It must have an identifier. Yeah. And it turns out that if you just Google around a lot, the game has ways of just linking an object to another player so you can show someone hi I have this awesome sword and they will see it in chat and if they click it they will see a, they will see a model of it and it turns out that some of those things typically use exactly the same ideas. And there are websites, item databases if you will, and they also use the same ID because why not? Why should we invent something else? So what I, what I decided to do was First, I use the Mac Pen tool, and what it does is you feed a data file in it, and it dumps out the internal tables of the game, and it has some tools to, to do interesting stuff with it. And I also wrote, wrote my own, because why not? Yeah. And I was bored of looking at hex dumps for a while, so I wanted to do something different. But it really helps if you know that an item you want you are interested in, because you pick it up or whatever, you, it helps if you know it has a certain ID. So, and the also interesting part of it is, if you have hex dump support, that you can just dump all packets as hex, you can just search for it. Because if you search in hex data for the ID, you will immediately identify all, pa all packets that do stuff with items. And that is so much easier than, than just looking them one by one. So, I was continuing and it, and it's really got nice. And then I got a packet and I was like, hmm, there's no pattern in this at all. What I like to do, I print stuff and I just grab a pencil, a lot of coffee and and an evening and I start just just drawing lines, annotating things as I think how they work. That's what I use. 
uh, and create object with this and this data, and I want to send it now, and all this packing and encrypting and stuff, it's all handled by this code. And it also creates Python bindings. So I can just hook it in my Python interpreter. I can say, hi, I want you to send create object with this and this arguments, and it broadcasts it to all the clients it has. That's really awesome, and you will see it too. So how, what does this look like? Now, I have this packet display yellow text. I'm sure you have no idea what it does. And what I do, and what you can do is you can just tell that to the server on some port. You can just copy paste your text in there. And what happens is, the, what happens is you will see yellow text on the client screen. But you can also mess with the parameter because hmm, I'm, I'm not sure what unknown for does. So I'm going to type something else and I'm going to look at what, what, what does the client show. And this is really fun to do because you can just change things and you can just observe what happens and you really learn quickly about it and you are not you're not harming anyone right because the well, the game servers uh, wherever they are they're just humming along they don't know what to do it because it's your own server but there was a snatch i was like hmm you know what i'm just going to to put this font kilobytes of data to the to the client and it crashes yay yeah, the client is, uh, if you play this game, you understand, maybe it wasn't the, uh, yeah, it could have used a bit more, uh, more Q&A, maybe. But, but so what I did was, I was like, hmm, if I just put sleeps in there, well, it took uh, a lot of time, but I managed to log in, and then I just started to remove stuff I hoped was not important, and step by step I got to somewhere I could log into the game world and I could do my packet analysis. So, I'm now going to show you a small demo, so please pray with me, start a line that it doesn't crash, because I won't say it happened before, because it has. But the packet I'm going to show is if you, the game works in objects, right? And if you create an object and you are and you are like a, 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 a player character, you can customize your character a bit. And the game uses some packets and it tells you, okay, the, 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 has, the hair looks like this, and the, 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 the beard style is fat, and what sort of stuff. So, but I, I, eventually I knew this packet does it, but I don't know what the, what the 32 bytes do, what it does. So, oh my god, it's no other. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to start my server, which has the nice name open room, because I really suck at names. And yeah, well, open projects are popular, right? So I was like, maybe if I adapt this one. So I'm going to log in with a username and password. Uh, I hope it's visible. But as you can see, uh, the server starts seeing stuff. Oh, and so we are it's just of the Magnum server, server order. the nice name Solitude. Because it's not really an online game anymore, is it? I'm going to log in with, uh, with a reverse engineer because that's what we do. And in the meanwhile, you will see the log on the backup. That, that's why you need logging. You want to so you want to know that stuff is going on. I'm not going to talk about what the packets are actually like. I will be presenting a short one on one the overview of the protocol, and you can get the rest of my GitHub. But uh, yeah, did I mention the game is slow? Ah, there it is. Now, as you can see, we're an engineer at 32 C3 because I can send whatever I want. So I can send guild names. Really fun. Oops. This is how the game is supposed to look like. And now I'm 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 going to zoom in on my face. And yeah, I really haven't. So now I'm just going to tell that to the server, and I'm going to enter Python stuff, right? And first I'm going to set the variable because it's variable tonight. Then I'm going to set a lot of data, and this is the data I just snipped from somewhere, and I'm going to uh, and I'm going to modify this. But first, I'm just going to send it. So what you see here is nothing happens. Oh, it's boring, but that's good because it's exactly the same data as I sent when I created this character. So now I'm just going to say, hmm, unknown five. I have no idea what it does, but I'm going to send it to two five five. Because 255 is a nice value. Or uh, 
uh, in a, uh, usually just testing extreme values. If it's 10, make it 200. If it's 200, make it three. It really helps to figure out the, the, uh, the, yeah, what kind of value it is. So now I'm going to send it to 255, and now I'm going to send the object appearance packet again. And as you can see, my character has <laughs> lost all his hair. <laughs> Stuck. Now, I can continue with this. I can also send a known, um, this unknown character. And now my beard is another color. So I know now that the beard is somehow linked to the known world and the character hair is linked to the known world. But what you can also do is you can also create arbitrary character. And I'm now going to quickly do that because sometimes you know that that, that commands interact with other, with other things. So now I want to create a, a monster. And I'm going to do it. And oh, of course I messed up. Now you see, we are friends. So yeah. that looks scary, right? But the good part is, I, I think it's not the object type command. Bye bye. You can just kill it. Okay. And then I had this unknown 92E thing and I didn't know what it was, so I'm just going to send it. And it sparkles. Sparkling is good. And sparkling in a game node, you can loot it. So now if I loot it, my server, uh, I guess I can show this as well. I, if I, you, you will see that, hey, I get an unknown 1FF back. So I know, aha. Unknown one FF must mean you want to lose, uh, and now I'm supposed to send to the client which kind of cool items he has. But well, that's about it for the demo. It's okay. So now I'm quickly going to cover the protocol because we're uh, running out of time. So, how the game works is you, there are three layers of servers. You have a login server, it will do, and it just says, Hi, who are you? Account name, password, and if it doesn't match, it's I go away. If you make it through it, you get to a portal server, and the portal server just says, Hi, those are all the game servers you can connect to. And if you then connect to a server, you end up with a specific game server. So you always have three hops, and that's why I wrote the proxy tool, because, well, it's, uh, it's a much nicer if, you, if someone solves all this problem. Now, the other thing to notice is this game has a lot of commands. Which grabs by pending. 
So if you log in, 500 kilobytes just has a lot of bad bits, because everyone loves bits too. And what it does is, it will just tell the client, okay, this quest you can, is not, is not done yet, and this quest is done yet. And the client figures out what it needs to show. Client security really sucks in this game. If you make a mistake and send a byte too much, it crashes. That's bad, right? If you, if you mess up the custom info packet, it, you get an, an exception in the, on the stack. Wow, it's really cool because, well, well we, we can execute code with this if we can influence the server. And I expect the server isn't really much better, but I didn't dare try it because, well, there's all sorts of information regarding it there. It tells you your MAC address, it tells you your video card, your operating system, stuff like that. I don't know why. Maybe if they wanted to have an ID of the of what you of what your clients are, but I can spoof them as well. So I was like, now what? Because I want to release this stuff, but I sought legal help. And the reason I did this is because I don't like getting sued. So there was some guy who was who had a talk who said awesome sign on a suit for two billion dollars. I don't want to give a talk about being sued for two million euros. So I was like, I'm going to talk to a lawyer. Most of them say, uh, don't go there. Oh, that's stupid, that's boring. So I met Arnold Engelfried and he was really helpful because what he told me was after a few meals, because he's one of the few person I know who is also an engineer, a software engineer, and he's also a lawyer. Crazy combination, but hey, all the better for us. And he says, well, those tools you made are really interesting. As long as you can, you, your goal should not be cheating. If your goal is cheating, you, yeah, you are you're acting illegally, right? Because well, that's that's not good. And if you do this in private, you don't believe anything. You can do whatever you want, but your goal can never be cheating. So I want to express my goal never was cheating. As he continued, he said, okay, well, the the, you shouldn't release the server code. The other tools are okay. They're nice, they illustrate a point, they are interesting. But the server, well, they can see it as competition, you know. And I was like, why? It doesn't crash as often. But the, the suggestion was, don't do it. Really, do not release it. And I was like, I'm a bit ashamed of what the code looks like, and I, I do not intend to release it, and it's not because I don't love, love open source and stuff, but I don't want to get sued, and if anyone here has contacts with, with, the, with the developer or publisher of this game, and it's like, okay, you can do it, I will, I will, and if they ever take the official servers on offline, so you can't play the game, I will immediately dump everything I have on GitHub. Cool. Das war doch uh, interessant. Uh, thank you for this uh, very insightful talk. We now have about 10 minutes for question and answer. So if you want to uh, ask a question, proceed to this inner microphones and yeah, we start right now. Uh, yeah, is that right microphone there? Hi, thanks for the talk. Did you ever accidentally send packets to the server and see it? Uh, yes, I did. And it, uh, it uh, was okay. Sorry, sorry. Uh, everybody who is now leaving, just be a little bit more quiet so everybody can get the question. So thank you. But yes, I did. And one of the things I wanted to know is if, the, if it really matters if the client sends all the data uh, in first. And if it does not, it doesn't. But that's code I'm definitely going to release because you know what you can do with it, right? Okay, is there a question on that microphone or no question? Okay, then another one there. Um, I wanted to know how long you've been working on this. Like, was it last week in a caffeine-fueled nightmare? Have you been working on this for several months now? Uh, this uh, project took two years, but it was on and off because I, uh, well, I did suffer from 
from yeah, other introverts, like life and stuff. So it was it was really ups and downs. But all, I can say that overall, I think if I could do this full time, it was about around four to six months, I guess. Because if you once you get you get into it, it really goes fast. Okay, there's a question from the internet. Yeah, uh, actually there are two questions right now. Um, the first one is uh, if there is any kind of end-to-end -end encryption or authentication between the client and the server. Um, yes, sure, and plus. Mm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, the second question is if you could, in theory, spawn items on a real server. <laughs> I knew that the question was coming. Yeah. Well, what I want to say about this is the following. I, I know about players within the game who have managed to duplicate items and stuff. You can do that, or you could. I don't know if you still can because I don't play the game anymore. And I have this idea if you don't want to let me play the game anymore. But you, most of it seems to be bugs on the server side. Because if the client is convinced he has some item, and surprise, surprise, you can lie about that, then I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's not rock solid. I think you can do it, but you just, most people find it out by just clicking an item seven million times and you can script in the game in Lua and some people just made scripts to do something 20 times in a row and the server just gave up and said okay whatever. So <laughs> it, it has happened, I don't know if it's fixed but it has, it has happened. And Are there more questions? Yes, there. Hello? Did you try the things on other MMOs, or is this a unique case with this broken piece of software? No, what you can do is you can do this basically on any game you want. You can also, uh, for example, if you have an SQL server, you could use some like these techniques, because it's, it basically boils down to understanding the data. And that's why I try to, to talk more about the, the, the approach I took than the actual game, because the game, well, it's less interesting than the approach. So, but if you're volunteering, I would really like to know how, how the Old Republic works. <laughs> okay, any more questions? On that microphone? Yeah, hi, uh, interesting talk. Thanks. Uh, actually, I'm a game developer, and at the moment I'm... <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to. <coughs> Not a massive multiplayer game, but uh, an online game, so... Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for me to make uh, you your work harder? Yeah, well, one of the things I think you should really consider is people can and will do this given they're uh, sufficiently bored of the game as I was. And one of the, and I think that what you should do is you, yeah, if it were up to me, I would just release the product and say, haha, have fun. But the, re the reason is, Eventually you will figure it out. Eventually you can learn how it works and you should design with that in mind. You should design one, hmm, if some crazy person sends complete quest 20 times, maybe I should check for it. You should, you should never trust data the client sends. You should always, you should always consider it as well that this can be influenced. You should always, you should also think about the fact that maybe someone did something evil and the client never got all data you sent, you, you instantly kick it off your network. I think you should design for that. There is another question from the internet. Yes, uh, the question is, have you have ever had contact with the developer? I'm sorry, could you repeat it? If you've had contact with the developer of the game. Uh, no, and the reason I didn't is I tried to contact some guys of the, the version communities, right, and everything I sent up uh, as, uh, and I had this idea they were connected somehow because both being in German and stuff. But the problem was I never could find anything and I do not know how to contact the, the publisher because it's really a, a large company based in Berlin. Really happy the Congress isn't there. And, the, and well, I don't know where to begin. So I was hoping maybe someone here knows how I can get in. I don't have any experience with that. Any more questions? Last chance. Okay, then. Yeah, thank you again for sharing our, your awesome work with us.
Okay, ja, das war Ring Springer mit How Hacks Grind, <coughs> How Hackers Grind in MMOR. OR, ich werde es nie richtig hinbekommen. How Hackers Grind an MMORPG by Taking It Apart. Ähm, ja, wir spielen hier auf Lesser mit dem gerade erreichbaren Anarchie-Server, den ich hier für euch eine lange Zeit lang hosten werde. Ähm, und ähm, für den unwahrscheinlichen Fall, dass vor meinem Ableben ich diesen Server nicht mehr betreiben kann, werde ich die Map natürlich für euch. Äh, ja, öffentlich bereitstellen und ähm, dann kann den Server irgendjemand anders übernehmen. Das heißt, ähm, auch ohne Client-Side World Downloading werden eure Errungenschaften auf diesem Server nicht verloren gehen. Naja, mal abgesehen davon, dass sie halt gegrieft werden können, weil es ein Anarchie-Server ist. Aber diese Welt hier ähm, wird äh, immer <lacht> gebackupt und liegt auf Microsoft-Servern, äh, auf GitHub, in einem privaten Repository. Ähm, und dementsprechend ähm, kann sogar mein ganzes Rechenzentrum in die Luft fliegen und die Map würde das trotzdem überleben. Ähm, ja, das ist doch äh, super, oder? Dann ähm, war es das mit dieser Episode der Dauerwerbesendung für diesen Anarchie-Server und ich würde sagen, wir sehen uns in der nächsten Folge wieder. IP zu dem Server und Link zu dem Video, was wir angeschaut haben, findet sich wie immer in der Videobeschreibung. Alles klar, haut rein. <lacht>